Today, I'll be reacting to The Last Choke, the LeBron James documentary event. <laughs> now, that's funny. People wanted me to watch this. Oh, my gosh. I already know the hate for LeBron is going to be crazy, but I expect this to be funny, though. On June 26, 2003, David Stern stepped to a podium at the theater at Madison Square Garden and made an announcement that would forever change the fabric of NBA history. The Cleveland Cavaliers select LeBron James. And for nearly 20 years since that fateful day, LeBron James has been delivering a non-stop assault on the NBA. From ushering in the era of the super team and destroying the competitive balance of the sport to elevating the flopping game to unparalleled heights while begging officials to bail him out in series after heart-pounding playoff series. The hate is crazy. <laughs> Okay, wait, hold up. You know I got to defend Brian. Hold up. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> okay, so, with, with dude, okay. LeBron did not mess up, like, the competitive nature of the NBA. Bro kept losing to a big three. People forget Boston had AG, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, and Rondo. <laughs> like, come on. Like, come on. LeBron left. Because he saw Kobe had pow, Lamar Odom, Trevor Reza, Derek Fisher, and them boys. Like I said, with the Boston Celtics big three, I think they had Kendrick Perkins too as well. To add it to the people I said, he wanted a squad. This, like, come on. LeBron wanted to win. He knew he couldn't do it in Cleveland. He said, y'all not going to give me a team. Okay, so I'll make my own. Like, come on. Y'all can't blame LeBron for that. He ruined a competitive nature. Super teams before that. He kept losing to a super team before he left. <laughs> like, come on. Come on, man. Perhaps the biggest staple of this all-time great's legendary career has been his ability to come up the smallest when the lights were at their brightest. And as is so often the case with most immortals, we are left almost in sheer disbelief, wondering if what we just saw really even happened. But following his most recent and predictable high-profile choke job, in the Western Conference Finals against the Denver Nuggets, it was this time LeBron's turn to step to a podium and wonder if after 20 years of delighting us with his hilarious failures, this might have been it. I had a lot to think about, to be honest. And um, just for me personally, going, going forward with the game of basketball, I got a lot to think about. The end of the ride, his final show, The Last Choke. LeBron certainly has been prolific and dazzling with his abilities to crumble in big moments, and it started at a very early age and stage of his NBA career, when in the 2006-2007 season, LeBron, in just his fourth NBA season, would make his first of 10 NBA Finals appearances, and he would not disappoint. Many pundits in the mass media and his fan base often give him a pass for this loss because of his relative age and supporting cast. But many downplay how close this series actually was. The Cavs' defense was fantastic that season and postseason, and it held the Spurs to just 86 points per game on 44% shooting from the field throughout the series. And two of these games were a one-possession margin. Yet the Cavaliers would ultimately be swept in this series behind the Young King, averaging just 22 points per game in the four-game sweep on 35% shooting. But two years later... Bro! <laughs> LeBron gets Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, Tim Duncan, and he probably was getting guarded by Bruce Bowen. He's getting swept. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, come on. Are you serious? Are, like, <laughs> the hate is crazy. <laughs> This video funny, but like, come on. LeBron by himself was not beating Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Mano Ginobili, and Bruce, and Bruce Bowen. He was getting swept. He was getting swept. Everyone should have known he was getting swept. Now, if you're using that loss against LeBron, like, that's messed up. That's messed up. That's messed up. Everybody knew he was losing. Everybody knew he was losing that. Honestly, if he did win that series, that probably, if he did win that series and he was like 22, 23, that definitely, I already think he's the GOAT, but that would have helped his GOAT case even more. In the 2008-2009 season, LeBron would be named MVP of the league 
for the first time in his career while leading the Cleveland Cavaliers to the best record in the NBA, a gaudy 66 and 16 record. They steamroll through the first two rounds of the NBA playoffs, sweeping the Detroit Pistons and the Atlanta Hawks. A high profile showdown between the actual best player in the NBA at that time, Kobe Bryant, and the media's king, LeBron James, seemed to be all but imminent. Okay, now I will admit at that time, Kobe Bryant was the best player in the NBA. Kobe Bryant is my favorite player. I think LeBron the GOAT, but Kobe Bryant is the one that made me love basketball and made me love watching basketball. Kobe Bryant is my favorite player, but I do think LeBron the GOAT. Now, I do think there was a time Kobe Bryant was better than LeBron all time. There was a time where I did think that. I think LeBron surpassed Kobe, but I definitely thought there was a time Kobe was better than LeBron, for sure. Especially at this time. He was definitely better than LeBron. The only thing standing in MVP LeBron's path was an Orlando Magic team led by 23-year-old Dwight Howard. Of course, we all know how that ended up, with Kobe Bryant winning his fourth title after beating the Orlando Magic 4-1 in those finals. But LeBron would return next year in the 2009-2010 season, looking for vengeance, and he would defend his regular season MVP award again leading the Cleveland Cavaliers to the best record in the NBA and after a gentleman's sweep of the Bulls in the first round he would come up against the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference semifinals and the Cavs found themselves in a dogfight tied 2-2 in that series and facing a pivotal swing game five at home when LeBron straight up quit in this game playing 41 minutes and scoring just 15 points on three of 14 shooting as the Cavs got absolutely dismantled on their home court, pushing them to the brink of elimination in game six. And of course, we all know how that one ended too, with Kobe Bryant winning his fifth title after beating the Celtics in seven. But this series broke LeBron James. Quit. Come on, quitting? That's insane. There's no way LeBron quit. And like I said, that Boston Celtics team and the teams he played, y'all talking about he losing to, they were better. They were better. He was losing that series either way. He was not beating Boston Celtics big three with Mo Williams as his second option. Now, if Mo Williams was his third option, okay. He has somebody else. As a second option, like somebody else is good, of course. Okay, they might will, because Mo Williams wasn't bad. But Mo Williams as a second option, that wasn't the way. They wasn't he wasn't winning no championship with Mo Williams as second option. Now, like I said, if he was your third option, okay, you probably could. Mo Williams was nice though, but he, he wasn't no second option though. And like I said, LeBron, of course, did not quit. And in turn, he would go on to break the NBA. A then back to back lead. Let me go back. Let me go back. Celtics in seven, but this series broke LeBron James, and in turn, he would go on to break the NBA. A then back-to-back -back league MVP, being falsely touted by many as the best player in the NBA, would decide to get on his hands and knees and crawl his to Dwayne Wade's team. Um, and this far, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. Two top five players in the sport joining forces in their prime in a weekend conference who then recruited Chris Bosch. Bosch at the time, of course, had played seven years in Toronto and made six all-star appearances over that time and had a career average of 20 points and 10 rebounds per game. I'm still trying to figure out what's wrong with LeBron doing that. And also, at that time, Kobe Bryant was the best player. I don't think no one ever considered LeBron to be the best player during that time. I knew he was an up-and-coming great player, but best player at that time, nobody thought that. Nobody thought that. Everybody knew Kobe Bryant at that time was the best player. Like, why is him leaving so wrong? Like, nobody, no star was going to Cleveland. He had to go. To win a championship, he had to go. He had no other choice. Still to this day, people getting mad at LeBron for that decision makes no sense to me. I, I seriously do not understand. What's wrong with him going to another team trying to win championships if the team he's on not trying to win one? Like, what's wrong with that? And also, I love how he just completely, like, dismissed the Boston Big Three, Big Four, wherever you want to say. Like, how you just completely dismissed that? LeBron got D-Wade and Bosh. I keep losing to the same team. They keep beating me. They got a big three. Okay, so let me get one. Okay, D-Wade, 
You got your ring in 2006. You haven't done nothing since then. Chris Bosh, you've been hooping in Toronto, but you have no ring either. So you're going to be extra motivated. Yeah, Chris Bosh, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated power forwards in NBA history. Shout out to Chris Bosh, by the way. Hope he's doing good. But yeah, what's wrong with LeBron doing that? I seriously do not understand, like, the criticism LeBron got for that. There's, no, there's nothing wrong players switching teams going to another team trying to win a championship. There's nothing wrong with that. That team was so unfairly stacked, so unbeatable. A then ringless king felt so confident he would proclaim that he and the Heat would win not just a championship, but... Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. What would ensue the following year in the 2011 NBA Finals was a tour de force of choking. LeBron's magnum opus choke job, his grand masterpiece. The Heat rolled through the Eastern Conference with a 12-3 record and had a 2-1 lead in the NBA Finals against a severely undermanned Dallas Mavericks team with only one All-Star. Looking to take a stranglehold in the finals and move just one step away from capturing his first NBA title, LeBron took a hot steamy dump in his pants, playing 45 minutes and scoring just eight points on three for 11 shooting. Now that finals, okay, y'all could criticize him for that. Yeah, he was bad. <laughs> y'all could criticize him for that finals. I give y'all that. Y'all could criticize him for that. He was bad. But yet again, wait, wait, we just not going to dismiss Dallas team like that only had one all-star. Tell me if I'm wrong. The Dallas Mavericks in 2011 beat San Antonio, swept Kobe, and beat OKC with Kevin Durant, Harden, and Westbrook. They wasn't no slouch team. They, they went through some teams in that West. They went through some teams in that Western Conference Finals. Like, come on. Come on. We just going to sit there and act like, oh, they only have one all-star. They were severely undermanned. No, they was nice. <laughs> They was nice. Dirk was hooping that year, too. Dirk was a monster that year. But yeah, they beat, if I'm right, they beat San Antonio. They beat Kobe. When well, they beat San Antonio, Tony Parker, Tim Duncan, Ginobili, they beat Kobe Powell and them. And also, yeah, OKC, KD, Harden, and Westbrook. Like, come on. They did that to get to the finals? Come on. Come on. Including zero points in the fourth quarter of a game that was 82-81 with 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. From on the doorstep of taking a decisive 3-1 series lead to not winning another game the rest of the way, the Heat would go on to lose that series 4-2 and LeBron was the third leading scorer on his own team and fifth leading scorer in the series. A reigning back-to-back, -back, two time league MVP in his eighth season, got outscored and outshot by 33-year-old Jason Terry in this series. As bad as the 17 points per game for the series may look, it pales in comparison to how pathetic he was in the fourth quarter, scoring just 18 points total in the six fourth quarters of the series. But even that doesn't seem so bad when you dig deeper into his clutch time play throughout this series. Yeah, he was bad. <laughs> now, that series, y'all could criticize him for that. He was bad. He was bad. Now, just to let y'all know, y'all love bringing this series up throughout his career. Y'all still gonna keep using this series against him, but he, he he's a four-time NBA champion, four-time finals MVP. That's all I'm saying, though. No. Meaning, in the final five minutes of games within five points or less, in these such situations, LeBron scored exactly zero points. Zero point zero after finally breaking through the championship glass ceiling the next two seasons with his unbeatable super teams two years later lebron would be up to his old tricks again back in the nba finals and getting humiliated blown off of the court by the san antonio spurs in five games signaling the end of lebron's tenure in miami only five championships short of his prediction it was off to bigger and better things Oh, no, wait, uh-uh, 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 no, uh-uh, no, say he slipped, uh-uh, say LeBron stats that series, say LeBron stats them series, LeBron was in that series, uh-uh, you gotta bring that up, uh-uh, no, he had to bring that up, ain't no way you go dismiss going on him, the Cleveland, uh-uh, uh-uh, break up his Miami, Miami stats, that last finals, LeBron was in, uh-uh, I love how he dismissed that, that's hilarious, that's great hating.
That video's funny, though, low-key. This video funny. But, like, come on, man. LeBron was hooping that series. The supporting cast was not helping out one bit that series. LeBron was balling. Come on. You got to bring up his stats for that series. Talking about, he, talking about he getting destroyed and all that again. He was hooping that series. Come on. Back in Cleveland with a shiny new super team to try to ring stack with. Everything was going according to form as the self-proclaimed king hit the game-winning, series-clinching shot in Game 7 against the Warriors. No, 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 they didn't. Well, no, no, he didn't. That was Kyrie Irving. But LeBron did finally get his third ring, and it was all for Cleveland. Cleveland! This is for you! Well, no, no, it wasn't. That one right there made you the greatest player of all time. But it seemed like... It did. Wait, hold up, hold up. 2016, that's when I said LeBron James is the greatest basketball player of all time. That series did it. Also, shout out to Kyrie for that shot. And also, shout out to Kevin Love for locking up Steph. I still appreciate Kevin Love to this day. Shout out to Kevin Love. Hope you do. Hope you're doing good in my with the Miami Heat. Hope you're doing good. Shout out to Kevin Love. Shout out to yeah. Shout out to Kevin Love and Kyrie. But yeah, that series made LeBron the goat. LeBron let both teams, the Cleveland Cavaliers and Golden State Warriors, in that seven game series, and points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. That made him the goat right there. I say, yep, that's the greatest basketball player I ever saw in my life. That made him the goat. My opinion, that made him the GOAT. In my personal opinion, that series made LeBron James the GOAT. I, I agree with LeBron when he said that. Yeah, you, he is the greatest basketball player of all time. He is. Like the championship wins it. That one right there made you the greatest player of all time. But it seemed like the championship window was wide open for LeBron with his latest super team until Kevin Durant and Steph Curry slammed it shut using the same playbook the NBA destroying King scripted years earlier. Yeah, yeah, KD got, yeah, I got mad at KD for that. <laughs> See, KD, KD, KD's my guy. I think he's top 15 ever. I think he potentially could be top 10 ever. But he messed up the script. He messed up the script, bro. He messed it up. KD, hey, I didn't even care KD left Oklahoma City. But, bro, you should not went to go to state. <laughs> he should have went there, bro. That was an easy three-peat right there. 2017 click. Yeah, KD was there in 2017. No, wait. Yeah, go to state one 2017-2018. If KD wasn't there, LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love was three-peating. I will always say that to that to this day. It was three-peating. Man, KD messed up everything, though. KD was nice, though. KD was nice on go to state, but man, I was mad when he did that. <laughs> man. <laughs> man, that got me angry, though. KD was nice, though. I un I understand KD won his rings. No, this is the thing on, on KD's standpoint. KD wanted to be wanted to be considered, in my opinion, this is why I think he went to Golden State. KD wanted to be considered the best player in the NBA. And he, he see that Golden State, Cleveland, Golden State with Steph, and Cleveland Cavaliers with LeBron kept going to the finals. So he like, okay. Well, in my opinion, a lot of people saw LeBron and Steph as the best two players in the NBA, and KD as the third. KD wanted to consider himself as the uh, best player in the world. So he, th so he think like, okay, I'm going to go to state. In my opinion, he went there because he probably thought LeBron was the best player in the world. So he thought, okay, to be considered better than LeBron, I got to go to Golden State and beat LeBron to be to be the best player in the world. Like, in my opinion, that's why he did that. That's my opinion. That's that's my opinion. It makes sense, but like, man, he messed up everything. <laughs> he really did, though. He really did, though. Like, KD, he with the Suns now. I, hope, uh, I wish him a lot of success until he played the Lakers. <laughs> like, K KD, he's playing with Devin Booker right now. Devin Booker is one of my favorite players. So, yeah, I hope Phoenix Suns have great success until they play the Lakers. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> I want If y'all play the Lakers in the playoffs, KD, I want y'all playing good, but just lose to LeBron. That's it. Y'all can average, you and Devin Booker can average 40. I ain't mad at y'all. Y'all nice, but just lose. <laughs> Respectfully. But yeah, back to LeBron. Getting distracted. Back to LeBron. Like I said, with him and Cleveland, they should have three-peated. I'll always say that. And thus, it was time to find something else. And he found it in LA. Well, actually, it was more like in Orlando, where he managed to win the flukiest ring in NBA history in the Disney bubble. Behind Anthony Davis, who led the NBA playoffs that year in points scored and played masterful defense. And it looked like in year 20, 
at the age of 38. It was all coming together one final time, one more magical garbage championship for the King as they went all the way from out of the playoffs with less than two weeks remaining in the regular season to steamrolling their way into the Western Conference Final. Wait, 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 I, <laughs> I love he's not, I love how this guy is not, is not like bringing context into situations. Shout out to Anthony Davis, by the way. Shout out to him for that 2020 ring. Shout out to AD. Hopefully the Lakers win another one this year with LeBron and AD. I'm rooting for them. But yeah, shout out to AD for that 2020 rank. He was balling. He was nice. But LeBron won the finals MVP though. Like, come on. Like, come on, man. You got to add LeBron win the finals MVP. You have to. You have to add that. This video's hilarious though. I really like this documentary. <laughs> behind Anthony Davis and a myriad of big contributions from a number of Lakers role players. The Lakers had everything they could possibly ask for in this series, with Anthony Davis playing elite, league-best type defense while averaging 27 points and 14 rebounds per game. Austin Reeves contributing 21 points per game on 55% shooting, and Rui Hachimura coming off the bench to add great defense of his own along with 15 points per game on 53% shooting. The Lakers were squarely within every game in this series as all four games were within one possession late in the fourth quarter with LeBron ball in hand at multiple moments throughout the series, clanking the game-tying three with 45 seconds left in game one, blowing this layup that would have made it a two-point game with 30 seconds left in game two, and this hilarious travel that of course went uncalled, followed by an epic brick that didn't even touch the rim that could have tied game four with just under 30 seconds left in the game. But with only four seconds left and the Lakers down by two, LeBron got one more opportunity to extend the game and the series. He would not disappoint. James on the drive, goes inside, stop, shot block, gets it back. It's over, it's over. Hold up, hold up. That was good defense by Jamal Murray, Eric Gordon. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, see, see stuff like this, right? See, I always say stuff in this scenario is LeBron has no win. Okay, LeBron dribbles the ball. He, like, for example, a Anthony Davis was behind the three-point line. He passed the AD. Let's say AD missed. Oh, LeBron scared of the moment. He's so weak. Ah, he's soft. Ah, LeBron's soft. Ah, he's scared of the moment. MJ and Kobe would never do that. Ah. But then he does that. We laugh at him. Like, come on. Like, come on. And LeBron was the best player that series. He failed to mention that. Again, he was the best player that series. Also, shout out to AD, Hachimura, and Austin Reeves. Shout out to them. Overall for the series, LeBron shot 7 of 23 for just 30% in the fourth quarters, where every quarter was close. And the overall net margin of differential was only 24 points for the Nuggets. If only the Lakers had a viable option in clutch time. With the future all of a sudden uncertain, it remains to be seen if this is truly the last moment we will see of LeBron on an NBA court, or if possibly he will recruit another Hall of Famer or two to amass yet another super team this offseason. But if this was truly the last time we see LeBron, he went out doing what he does best and delighting us all one final time. In my opinion, LeBron James is the greatest basketball player of all time. This was by far the most funniest documentary I ever saw in my life. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, the hate was crazy, but it was hilarious, though. But come on, all of us know, statistically, LeBron James is one of the most clutchest players in NBA history. I don't care how much you like, how much you hate LeBron. Everybody know LeBron James is one of the most clutchest players in NBA history. Like, come on, come on. Everyone knows that. We saw LeBron hit multiple game winners a plentiful, astronomical amounts of game winners. <laughs> like, come on. LeBron's that guy. LeBron's the GOAT. This, Like I said, this documentary was hilarious, though. This this video was very funny. I <laughs> I liked it, though. It was funny. So drop down in the comments below y'all thoughts about this video. Did you agree with this guy take about LeBron being a choker? Do you think LeBron the GOAT? If you don't think he the GOAT, we have LeBron place all time. I'm curious to see what y'all think. And I hope everyone have a blessed day. I'm out.